Hello guys and welcome to another episode of Badman Gaming. So, we're gonna go explore the district a little bit and uh, get our firm groundings and just kind of show you guys what this whole city looks like as I run in a circle and watch all my characters run in a circle with me. Uh, so this is our Blade Barracks, obviously. You guys have pretty much seen most of the administrative district by now. This is the mission segment where we can grab any missions we want. We do not have Blade ID yet, so we can't take a look at it. This is also our scout where we can hire uh, other people to come help us. Over this way is where some of our party members will hang out. There's just basically some looks around other members and random people hang out here. This is the maintenance center. This is basically the probe uh, HQ is this building right here. Uh, down here is a giant lake. That, like The whole town is surrounded by, uh, is on top of a giant lake. If I wanted to, I could actually jump down into that lake and I would be fine. I'd be totally 100% fine. I would just have to swim all the way back up, uh, which is a pain in the butt, kind of. So let's not do that. Heading back this way, we'll find our way back in front of the administrative district. Wow. In front of the administrative district, where we will see HQ. There's also a treasure chest here that I'm pretty sure we can't open yet. Yeah, level 4 mechanical. <laughs> Definitely can't open that yet. Now, heading on below, I actually haven't really explored in my... Like, I've explored pretty much the whole city besides the underneath, which is right down here. Woo! Like I said, no fall damage. This is below the administrative district. Uh, this is where they were talking about where all the skills take place. Uh, like, just a lot of skill stuff down here. I haven't gotten any skills yet, so I haven't really taken a look at this area a lot in, uh, in my playthrough. So there's not too much I can talk to you guys about here. Um, hmm. The elevator is ready for use. So this is an elevator. Probably, I'm assuming this goes back up to the, the top administrative district. Uh, there's some more hmm. stuff around here, some hangers and stuff that we can't get into yet because we don't have blade access and we don't have a skill, um, or skill access. So, that's our very brief rundown of the administrative district. So, let's, we're gonna run over here to the residential district and take a look at all of the stuff here, uh, get ourselves some, uh, some quick, uh, fast travel points. And yeah, I'm also going to bring my map down here a little bit. So we're now in the residential district. So, like they pointed out early, we, we have our chapel, which has Hope here, who is actually uh, a very smart superstar. I haven't really gotten to talk to her, but I have talked kind of to her in the... Basically, there's a line up there to basically talk to this chick, because she's some kind of superstar. Uh, this is basically just the residential area, all of our towns and whatnot. There are plenty of people around here to talk to that I'll give you quests later on. And there is a... where is it? It's over, over here somewhere. Also, cars uh, are of no problem to me. I can walk right through them because I'm awesome like that. Uh, let me open up the administrative district. Uh, the... where is it? Residential district actually open this up on my gamepad here. So we're basically just gonna kind of run up and down here and get ourselves some quick access travel points. As you can tell, it's just a bunch of houses. There's not too much here until later in the game where uh, we can start coming here. Oh, okay, I guess I can't walk through that car. Where we can start coming here to talk to people who will give us quests and whatnot. Also, while you, uh... As you walk by all these people with speech bubbles, they'll say things. Uh, sometimes they can make more things uh, pop up on your, uh, what's it called? They can make more things pop up on your map and give you more information that you wouldn't have before. Uh, we also have the park that they were talking about right here, Deliverance Park. And that's about it for this area. We're actually going to head on over to the Waterproof here. Wow. Pur purifica purification plant. There we go. We're going to head on over to the uh, commercial district now. And there we go. Uh, I 
actually don't think I am gaining any fast travel points right now, but I could be wrong. Uh, they're not really popping up on my map for some reason. But I believe that, um... I believe that they will pop up on my map later into the game, because I've discovered them. I don't think I'll have to discover all this stuff again. So I'm actually going to go this way. I'm going to go to the top area first here. Because there's a little tiny square area with some hotels here, and then the rest is actually the the commercial district that I'll show you guys off. And then there's just the, the manufacturing district, or whatever it's called. Um, there's not too much there to go over. There's nothing really there that I found throughout my playing. A couple of the party members hang out there, but besides that, nothing too crazy. No real quests. There's some... There's some, uh... People over here. You get anyone with a like a little that mark above their head, or people that you can talk to, uh, and you can inquire about informations and whatnot from them. Uh, you can also talk to anyone with an exclamation mark above their head, which will give you a quest. So this is our commercial district, which has all of our different town people and shops and whatnot. There's a couple quests. There's some quests that you can do here. There's actually a ton of quests you can do here. Um, I've only done one quest so far in my actual playthrough, which is um, there's some chick who works at a uh, at a coffee place here, and she just breaks everything that she touches. So um, she, yeah, she breaks everything that she touches. So you want so you have to go get parts for her to fix the things that she's broken, and then she goes and breaks something again. It's we'll, we'll do it when we get there. There's also a uh, where is it? Oh, we cannot get to that. Alright. So yeah. Great. So that is pretty much this is pretty much the commercial district. We're just gonna run around here a couple more times, run up and down the streets here. Get all the different regions that we can get. See there we we gathered some treasure info from that guy. Look at the awesome new car. I wish I owned a ride like that instead of having to use those lousy blade loaners. All right, so that's pretty much everything for this area. We can actually head on down to the, uh, what's it called? I wanna call it uh, the industrial district. So the industrial district is actually pretty small and it's attached to the commercial district, which is just up here. This is where we came in. This has the west gate and a few other small things, but nothing really big or important that I that I know of so far. So up here is the west gate that we came through. Uh, we came through the entrance up there, I believe. No. No. Listen. Yeah, we came through up to there. Uh, but that is that's just like the side entrance. The actual west gate is there. Um yeah. So that's the west gate, uh, another area that we can leave out to go explore the actual world. Um, there's some more stuff over here, there's some quests around here later on, but besides that, nothing too well. crazy that I know of. I haven't really found any really real use for the industrial district, uh, besides like a few quests and if you actually want to walk out the west gate, uh, even though you usually end up... Uh, just kind of fast traveling outside anyways. And that's everything. We're kind of back over here into the, the commercial district. Well, this is still the industrial district, but this uh, diner here is actually part of the industrial district for some reason. Um, there's actually some more stuff over here too, but again, nothing of real importance. I feel like this is important, but I haven't really explored it really. Yeah, Outfitter's Test Hanger. I feel like this is for skills that I haven't really, uh, really done anything with yet. And over here is something on, it's actually on the map. I don't know if it'll have any importance later in to the, up oh, well I fell, up oh, well I fell. And into the water. I don't know if this has any real importance uh, later into the game, but from my understanding, well, from the map, this is called the, the Undeveloped Area, um, and there's literally nothing here besides water. Um, yeah, so yeah, there's nothing in this part, uh, it's just the Undeveloped Area. 
And yeah, that's about it. We can actually swim all the way out of here. We can swim over to those ramps there and kind of climb our way out. But screw that. We're actually just going to fast travel back to... Uh, we're going to fast travel back to the... Oh, I don't have fast travel. That's why. I don't have fast travel yet. Um, do I have any fast travel points? Yeah, okay. Well then, I guess we're just going to have to swim. It's actually not that bad swimming, because uh, you can kind of swim sprint in this game compared to the other games, and you can actually just get on here and jump across these things. So we'll be we'll be back at the administrative district in no time. We basically just like run to those poles over. We run across these things and then jump to those poles there, and we're basically out and back in the administrative district. Um, so yeah, we're gonna head out onto our first quest, which is actually a really good first quest. I am um, like it's a, I mean like main quest. Like I'm not counting the other quests. They're kind of like like intros, prologues, story cutscenes and stuff. They're not weren't even missions. This is like the first mission where we're actually like sent out into the into the open world to go explore, and I think it's a pretty good mission. Oh no. Oh can I land it? Oh MLG <laughs> Yeah, so we're actually gonna head out into the administrative dis I mean, wow. We're gonna head out into the open world here in a second and actually uh, get some missions done, which I'm excited about. Uh, this, I feel like this episode's been pretty good so far. Um, yeah, I feel, I, I definitely feel like this episode's been pretty good so far. We're only like 10 minutes in and uh, we're only 10 minutes in, and we've actually gotten a decent amount of, uh, did I not? There we go. We're only like 10 minutes in, and I've, I've talked about it a decent amount. I've pretty much showed off the whole city, uh, gotten all the fast travel points for the cities once I unlock fast travel, and, uh, and now we're about to head out onto our first mission, so we've actually gotten a decent amount done in this episode, and I'm I'm kind of happy with this episode compared to the last two, which were just straight up cutscenes. I'm definitely sorry about that, uh, but there's really nothing I can do about that. We're starting to get out of the point in the game where it's a lot of cutscenes. Um, it only took like four episodes, so this episode we're actually going to get some stuff done, which is nice, and then we'll be starting to get into the episodes where we're going through missions and getting tons of stuff done, start getting into side missions, it'll be great! Uh, so we're actually gonna head out, looks like it's raining outside, it's the afternoon currently. So we're gonna be heading outside, uh, from the east side, this will be the first time we're actually heading into the east side. So welcome to the east side of the city, which you, which you can see looks a bit different. Um, you can't even really see like the big pillar thing anymore. It's pretty much like way back there. Um, you can see a lot more though. We got that over there. We got that laser there is actually where we're heading. We got a ton of stuff. There it is right there. So that's the big thing back there. Way back on the west side that we were pretty close to last time. Now we're way over here on the east side. Uh, but as you can see ahead of us, there are a ton of dead giant monkeys, which probably isn't a good sign. So let's head in here and uh, get our cutscene going on. And that doesn't look too pretty either, does it? What the hell happened here? You don't think that one Cynicula could have killed all these Simeus? Unless... Unless... what? This is bad. What's bad? I don't follow you. That Cynicula. It's a tyrant. Huh? But it looks just like any other Cynicula. Think about it. Your typical Simeus is way higher up on the food chain than your typical Cynicula, right? Usually, we'd find one Simeus standing over three or four Cynicula corpses. But here, the tables have been turned. And I don't see a single trace of any other indigens in the area. There's only one explanation. 
That Sinicula is a tyrant. Let me check the Blade Report database. If there's a tyrant this close to the city, someone must have run across it. Bingo. Bingo, bongo, bingo. There was a Sinicula bingo. tyrant sighted not too long ago. But it was a couple of segments further out. It could have followed the blade that spotted it back towards New L.A. Or come here to feed, or who knows what. That's crazy. I can't believe there's a tyrant right on our doorstep, and HQ isn't doing a thing about it. Well, don't forget why they sent us here in the first place. Frontier Nab's range is still limited. Oh, right. They couldn't track it if there's no local code. They must have lost it when it went off the grid. So either we can suggest killing the tyrant, attacking it, or we can ask what a tyrant is. So let's inquire on what a tyrant is and have them uh, kind of explain it. The tyrant designation is given to creatures that pose a special threat in the moon. That doesn't always mean raw strength. Some tyrants will actually register as low rank when they find them out in the field and engage them in combat. But don't let that fool you. If a creature shows up as a tyrant, you can be sure it's got at least one nasty traitor ability to speak of. The system can't account for everything, though, so don't let your guard down, no matter what rank it assigns. Even some of Blade's very best teams have come back with serious injuries after running into a tyrant in the field. If they come back at all. Suggest the three of you can handle it. Unite. Say you can't just leave it so close to New L.A., so we can either suggest uh, uniting as a team to take it down, or we can just suggest protecting the city. Basically, either of these require you to attack it. It's just kind of your opinion on whatever you want to decide here. So I'm going to say, let's do this as a team! Yeah! Well, alright. I'm game if you are. Count me in, Elma. Let's do this. If we're going to settle here on this planet... We're gonna have to get used to dealing with tyrants now and then. We can't just keep running forever, you know? Besides, I'd never forgive myself if someone else ended up getting hurt because we just left it here. Alright. Let's do it. But don't push it, okay? Either of you. If we can take it down, great. But if not, even just luring it away would be a moral victory. As long as we buy enough time to install the probe, we can use Frontier Nav to track it, or any other tyrant that comes this close to the city from now on. Just make sure you're ready before we attack. This will be tougher than anything else we've faced. Gear and Arts. Engaging a tyrant is no small task. It's important to equip your best before charging in, so double check all weapons and gear. Oh, and make sure your arts are ready and leveled up, okay? That's the first step to becoming a combat master. So check gear, main menu, party, ground gear. We can also upgrade our, our arts. So let's quickly do that before we run in and uh, start attacking this tyrant. So if we go to party and go to our ground gear, we can actually... Uh, check our equipment. It'll pop up if we have anything new, which we do. Which I'm just going to scroll through. And... Things. So I'm not a super pro at this, but if we scroll through, it'll tell you the attack damage that your weapons do, what level they are. So it looks like our best decision is probably going to be either the Storm Rifle here or the Advanced Storm Rifle Assault... the Advanced Storm Assault Rifle. Um, this will give us more attack, basically one more attack than we currently have. Uh, this will give us 11, uh, this will increase our range by 11 and increase our attack range, uh, our total range attack by 11 and our ranged attack by 10. Um, I'm, I'm going to go, I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to go through, but as you can see, it basically tells your stats here what you're going to go down, your cooldown, your ammo. Cooldown is basically how long between each attack. Ammo is how much uh, shots you get in. Um, if it's a gun, if it's nice, there's no ammo, obviously. Uh, but how many shots you'll get in before you have to reload. Um, the TP gain is how much TP you'll gain from attacking. The attribute is what kind of damage it'll deal. Stability is how much... Uh, I'm, pretty sure, I'm pretty sure stability is, has to deal with accuracy. Um, upgrades is how much you can upgrade, uh, how many times you can upgrade the gun, which I've actually never done in my game yet. Uh, 
melee attack up. Uh, the, those everything underneath that are special attributes that weapon can have. Some uh, weapons have special attributes, and you can also add your own attributes onto those weapons um, if you have the right items and if the weapon allows it. Um, now. What I like to do is actually, I'm really lazy and I don't like going through all this stuff a lot. So I'll press X, and uh, this will bring up your sub menu, which allows you to view your model, uh, change your fashion gear. So if you don't like, if you don't like, if you put on your primary gear and you don't like what that looks like because it looks really stupid, uh, you can actually change what your character looks like using uh, your fashion gear. So you can put on, you know, I can put on the scouter, and I can uh, be like, you know, I like the worn uh I like the worn survival body wear and then I can put some arms on but I don't have any and I can choose what kind of pants I want so I'm gonna use these pants so no matter what I change in my actual so let's say if I go down to my pants here oh okay let's see if I go to my torso here uh, no matter what I change here it won't change how I look uh, but, like I was saying, what I like to do is I like to hit X, and I like to just equip Strongest Gear. Um, it's probably not the most effective way to do it, uh, especially if you're going to fight a specific thing and you need more of something than something else. Um, it, it's not the best thing to do, but I'm lazy, and I just kind of like doing it that way. Uh, especially at this lowest tier here, it's not like I really need anything crazy. So we're just going to equip our Strongest Gear on all of these characters. Um, I'm actually going to do my fashion gear too while I'm here. Uh, I, and I definitely, I like Elma's body wear, so I'm gonna make her continue having that. Uh, Lynn, we're also going to equip her strongest gear. Uh, which basically just does not change anything for her. Alright, um, and then our arts. We can also go into our arts and choose what arts we want, but we only have so many arts unlocked, so it doesn't change anything. Um, but we can level up our arts. So, what I'm going to level up here is I'm going to level up my slit, slit edge, uh, my assault hammer, and my flame grenades, because they're the, my main attacks that I find using, and I'm going to level up my recuperate just in case I need some HP in this fight. Um, and then on top of that, I'm going to upgrade my Assault Hammer one more time. Uh, just because it's my topple and it's very important. And since I have the leftover BP, I'm also going to upgrade my Slit Edge. So moving on to Elma, I am going to... Uh, I'm going to upgrade her... Her Sliding Slinger, because she likes to use it a lot. My Side Slash. Basically, her main attacks I'm going to upgrade. Um, her, uh, her Critical Bonus Attack. Which and her two critical things, and then I will upgrade her sliding slinger one more time. Uh, Elma doesn't have too much to upgrade at the moment, so I'm just gonna pretty much equal distribute equally distribute her stuff, and then put the last little bit in. There's not enough, anyways. So that's pretty much everything for right now. Um, I, I don't have any skills because my class doesn't have any. Same with, uh, and I haven't unlocked any skills for these two characters yet. Uh, and classes are basically what class you want. I am almost able to reach, uh, to unlock my next class. Uh, your next class will unlock at level 10 of each class. Uh, in my game, I went dual guns, dual swords, and then I, I went into commando, and then I went into uh, winged viper. Uh, but I'm thinking I'm going to go Striker this time. Uh, striker is basically your easier classes uh, for beginners. This is kind of like a medium-ish uh, classes. And then the, the Enforcer is where you go for like your professional. You're definitely really good at this kind of shit classes. All right. Uh, so we're definitely past our 20 minutes here. But we're going to say screw it. And we're going to run straight in here. And we're going to get heads on with this thing. Alright, so this thing's actually only level 5, and it's really not that tough of a fight. Uh, you'll find yourself really having not too hard of a time against this guy. Even when I fought him, I was a much lower level. He's actually staggered now. I tried to topple him, but it didn't work too well, because he's giant. It's much harder to topple larger enemies. Uh, but yeah, this fight is actually really easy. I saw this thing, and I thought this was going to be a really hard fight really earlier into the game, but surprisingly wasn't. Uh, but yeah, as you can see, I'm taking out his appendages. I already took out one, and I'm working pretty hard on the second one. I almost got it out. 
So, well, so see if I if I were to take out this appendage, he wouldn't have uh, he won't be able to do that kind of damage. Uh, he won't be able to really attack with that foot anymore. And this appendage is done. There we go. Oh yeah, he's pretty much halfway done already. Alright, so I'm going to use my TP here. Just because I am actually getting pretty close to dying. So this will continuously regenerate my health, which is really nice. There we go, and he's dead. See what I mean? It really, it's really not that hard of a we fight. Are awesome. Nice work, Lin. You fought well. You did too. Now let's get down to business and install that data probe. If we stay here for long, there's no telling what other playmates might show up. This beam of light indicates a frontier nav site. It marks the ideal spot to bury the probe. All right, so and here we go, burying our pr first probe. Okay, the probe should be ready for insertion. I'll just boot it up. Thanks, Lynn. The top half of the cylinder contains the probe itself. The bottom half is a laser. It dissolves the soil so the probe can burrow to the proper depth. We tried just planting them on the surface at first, but we kept running into problems with the local wildlife damaging the goods. Burying them is going to save us all a lot of time and headaches in the long run. We all set? Yes, ma'am. Whenever you're ready. Why don't you do the honors? You can launch it right from your comm device. Give it a try. Show interest and launch the probe. We can also persuade Lynn should take care of it. Uh, but I'm going to say, screw Lynn, and I'm going to launch it myself. With my Dragon Ball Z Scouter. I'm currently really upset with my character in my game uh, because my best item that I have right now is a little bunny mask thing. So I have this bunny thing on my face and I can't get rid of it because I have nothing better to put on and I don't have any fashion gear uh, to cover it up with. So my guy's just been running around forever with this little bunny mask on and it looks retarded in cutscenes. We are now online with a solid connection to Frontier Nav. Excellent. See? At the end of the day, there's really not much to it. The hardest part was calculating the ideal probe locations. We need them spread out evenly to maximize data collection. Yep, planting probes is easy. And the more we plant, the more likely we are to find missing crew. So anytime you see a probe site, there's no excuse not to plant that sucker. That'll do it for your training. Let's head back to the barracks and report to Secretary Nagi. Alrighty. I'm Lo, a Pathfinder. If we're gonna grow Frontier Nav, we need to install more data probes. To plant one, simply approach a vacant and a Frontier Nav probe site and press the A button. This requires your mechanical field skill to be up to snuff, so don't forget to level it up. Mechanical skill is definitely the most important thing. Engaging massive foes. Now all that's left is to report back to base. But first, I'll let you in on a secret. A giant beast like that is usually best engaged with a skell. Neutralizing a foe like that on foot, especially a tyrant, is pretty risky. So be careful about such things in the future, okay? Alrighty, guys. Well, that will do it for... Uh, this episode, I think this is a pretty ep good episode. We finished our first kind of main mission. We got rid of a tyrant. We explored the whole city. Uh, this was a great episode. So I hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you guys in the next one.